this would be the niche that I think that you could reach out and find great clients and customers because they're tired of dealing with social media companies that will promise the moon and deliver the light bulb in the room. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome back to the, well, if you're listening for the first time, welcome to the program. But for most of you, welcome back to the program. Appreciate you being on board. I want to talk today about a question that I get uh, pretty frequently from my mastermind group. And it is a discussion that we have quite often with the all-star team. And that is, should I hire a social media guru? Going to talk about that in just a few minutes. I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies, Alamode, of course, being one of them. Alamode is the company that I use for my form filling, and you should be too. It is the most efficient software out there for appraisals. You can find them at alamode.com or 800 Alamode. Sponsored by Data Master, saving you 30 to 60 minutes per report. They say, give us 60 seconds, we'll save you an hour. I think that's true on most reports. And finally, we are sponsored, of course, by Working RE Magazine. Working RE is where I go to find out more about what I do. It's workingre.com. Again, workingre.com. Well, folks, you might notice a little bit of a difference in my sound quality today. Maybe better, maybe worse. I don't know. Let me know. I'm actually sitting in a parking lot in a very quiet neighborhood inside my car, speaking into my Yeti microphone and into my laptop. So let me know how it sounds on your side. I've actually heard people say that when I'm in my car, it actually sounds a little bit better. And I can understand that because normally I'm in an office environment, a quiet office environment, but still an open space where a car provides a little bit more uh, condensed version. But I had a few minutes, had some things on my mind and thought, uh, you know, why not? Let's pull over and uh, let's talk about some things that are plaguing appraisers these days. All right, let's set this up this way. You know that I am big on efficiencies. I'm big on delegation. I'm big on the doctor's office analogy, making sure that you stay where your expertise is needed most. You're the doctor, right? And so this question comes up, well, what about marketing, Dustin? Should that be something that an appraiser delegates? And I think the answer is, as the answer most often, always is on these types of things? Well, it depends. It depends on a very, uh, well, a, a wide range of factors, right? But let's talk specifically today about social media. Now, when I say social media, I'm talking specifically about a marketing standpoint. I do not believe, and I could be convinced otherwise, but I do not believe that you should be delegating your social media regular interaction with others to someone else, okay? You're not a celebrity, you know, I don't know if Donald Trump does his own tweets or not. Who knows? Who cares? But I doubt it, right? I'm sure those are run through a team of people and, of course, maybe run past him. And same with other celebrities, but that's not you. So the, the question is, and I've talked here on this program before about the importance of being active in places such as Facebook, right? Being known and being known as the expert, being out there. For example, I belong to several local community groups on Facebook. These are just local groups that talk about the farmer's market that's coming up this weekend or the pothole that's on Oak Street that's never been fixed. I belong to several of those and I'm very active in those spaces because when a question comes up about property values, comes up about the local real estate market, I chime in. Now I chime in on other things as well. I don't want to just be putting myself out there as a guru in one uh, specific world, if you will. By the way, I use the word guru very lightly. Um, what I'm talking about is is being willing to give of yourself, to give of your time and your expertise and willing to be there for people's questions. Because what happens is that often will come back full circle. Now, that should not be the reason you're doing it. 
Okay, let me make that clear. That will be very clear to others as well if you're only there to garner new business. But the nice thing is, is if you're truly there out of altruistic means and you're out of helping and being a benefit to the community, this will often come back to you full circle because when someone needs an appraisal, when somebody needs to know what the value of their home is, when somebody is going through a divorce and needs an expert, Right, They're going to know who to turn to because you've been very active in that space and letting everyone know that you are there and that you care. Right, Well, that rhymes. You are there and you care. But So I don't suggest that you do any delegation there. Okay, There's, there's too much personalization that needs to be done by you and cannot really be delegated to someone else. So keep that. Okay. What I'm talking today about is your social media presence when it comes to direct marketing. I'm talking about overt. This is an ad. This is a Facebook ad. I'm specifically reaching out and, and trying to garner your business. Okay. These would be Google AdWords. These would be the SEO. This would be uh, Instagram and Twitter and any other format that you use on social media to reach out. It could be email. Right? Do you have an email list of realtors, of attorneys, of past clients that you're constantly marketing to? Folks, if you don't, by the way, you are missing out on a great opportunity. So many of you reach out to me and say, Dustin, I want to do more non-lender work. And my first question is, okay, how much are you doing right now? Second question is, how much do you want to do? And the third question is the kicker. What are you doing right now to garner that work? Now, I can tell you, and this is not going to come as a surprise to you, my listeners, that the answer most likely and most often to that question is, well, I know I should be doing more. Oh, or I'm doing a little bit, but not enough. Or, Dustin, I haven't done anything. Let's just be honest. Okay. And then nothing wrong with that, by the way. But that gives us a starting place in my coaching to say, okay, let's start. Let's start somewhere. Let's see where you want to go. Let's create this vision story of what you want your appraisal world to look like. And now let's start to put the pieces into place. And by the way, I can help you with that. I've had great success in coaching other appraisers who have never done social media marketing before to start and to be successful very quickly in that realm. I can help you do that. But so can others. Now, there are not very many, if any, there are a few that I know of, individuals out there that specify in social media marketing for real estate appraisals. Okay. There's a couple of experts across the nation that specify or that specialize rather in that. That's great. Okay. Maybe, but there are plenty of companies. You have several in your hometown and there are plenty of, this doesn't have to be a local thing. That's the great thing about social media, right? You could hire somebody from Tennessee if you live in Idaho, that could do social media marketing for you. The question on the table is, should you? Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, Dustin, what are you talking about? I mean, you're big on delegation. You're big on on finding experts that will make up the difference where you're not an expert, right? You're an expert appraiser. So focus your time and efforts on appraising, not on social media marketing. And I would say that there is a lot to be said about that. But there are some cautions, and these come from real life experiences that I'm going to give you when we get back from the break. I want to pause here, remind you about some other experts in the appraisal field, one of them being Data Master. Data Master has been around for many years, folks, and Data Master has been saving appraisers time and money by allowing their software to do the data entry that you would do or delegate to someone else. Folks, when you look at the quote unquote cost, of Data Master, it does not hold a candle to the value that you receive in return. We're talking about saving you 30 to 60 minutes. So on average, 45 minutes per report. What is that worth to you? Do you know what your dollar per hour is? Do a quick calculation and then tell me that the cost, the fee for Data Master isn't worth it. Folks, if you're ready to start saving time and start saving money and being more efficient In your appraisal world, check out Data Master by going to datamasterusa.com. Either go to datamasterusa.com or go to datamasterusa.com and check them out. All the mode, of course, is providing services and has been to appraisers for years and years and years. They continue to lead the industry in form-filling software for appraisers. Why? Well, honestly, folks, it comes down to a couple of things. 
First of all, they have the best software out there. Second, they have the best tools within that software of any other company out there. And third, they have the best support of any appraisal software out there. Check them out. Go to alamode.com where you can pick up the phone and talk to an individual. Folks, you're not talking to a robot. You can talk to an individual at 800 Alamode. Finally, we're sponsored by the great people over at Working RE Magazine. Just talking to Isaac over the email just yesterday, the day before. Great guys, by the way. Just really love their job. You can tell in their writing. You can tell in the way that they are on top of what's going on in the industry. And before you even know what's going on, they have already written an article about it. Folks, if you want to know what's going on in the chosen career that you have, your profession, go to workingre.com and sign up for their free newsletter. That's workingre.com. And we're back. Welcome back to my car. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. We're talking today about social media marketing. And specifically, I laid the baseline that, yes, I'm big on delegation. Okay, And you would think, because I'm not a social media guru, that I would want to delegate that to someone else. And the answer is yes. Okay, Let me just, let me just go to the punchline first and say, I think that if you can find the right company with the right contract that delegating this part of your business is very important and very beneficial. Now, I say that with a caveat because I have seen over and over and over again appraisers that have lost their shirt in fees, in contracts, in things that they're stuck in with regard to social media marketing. Let me give you a brief description of what I have seen happen over and over again. You ready? Okay, this is what happens. Joe Q. Appraiser decides that he wants to do more appraisal work, but non-lender, okay? Wants to market to attorneys, wants to market to realtors, wants to market to homeowners, okay? Wants to be a presence in his local market. He knows himself and he knows he's not an expert. Sure, he knows how to do Facebook. Sure, he knows how to Google things. Who doesn't, right? But actually getting his potential demographic with eyes on his website, with that conversion into actual money in his pocket is not his expertise. So he listens to the Appraiser Coach podcast and he hears over and over and over again this guy named Dustin Harris talking about delegation talking about the need to focus on what you are expert at and delegate the rest. So he makes this conversion in his head and says, okay, I need to delegate this part out and I'm willing to pay for it because it will come back in droves. So he does a little looking around. He finds a social media marketing company, say in his local hometown. He goes in, he sits down for an hour, hour and a half consultation. He walks out with eyes as big as silver dollars. Because this company is going to say, oh my gosh, we can do so much good for you. We can do this. We can do that. We can do Facebook. We can do Instagram. We can do Google. We can do SEO. We can do blog posts for you. We can make sure that we put you eyeballs right on your business, that that people are seeing you, that they're, that they're clicking on your website, that they are converting over into money in your pocket, right? And this guy is not stupid, okay? So he starts to do the math and he says, okay, that could mean three, four, five thousand dollars worth of conversion if I stay up on it and if I'm focused on it. So then he goes back to the marketing company and he says, okay, what's all this going to cost? Well, at first they're going to talk about value. They're going to talk about return on your investment. They're going to, you know, they're going to sell you, which is, you know, what any good marketing company will do. But eventually they're going to get to the bottom line and they're going to say, I don't know, a thousand dollars a month, 900, 1100, whatever. I have seen this over and over and over again, appraisers dishing out approximately $1,000 a month. Now, here is the catch, okay? Again, I have absolutely no problem spending $1,000 a month if it is literally converting over into four, five, six, seven thousand $7,000 $7, a month in revenue. Not only that, but also building my brand, building my namesake, all of this goes into the social media side. In other words, you're not just getting conversions now, but you're also planting seeds down the road. I have zero problem with delegation. I don't have time for that. 
I don't have the expertise for that. I am not going to keep up on Google Analytics and make sure that their algorithms don't change and that I have to change according. I don't want to do all of that. I don't. I have no problem delegating. But here's what, pro what do I see over and over and over again, right? Typically, these companies are going to be very good in the first three to four months. They're going to spend time. They're going to spend effort. They might revamp your website. They might get you a, a Google business page. They might get you a better, if, if you have one or if you don't have one, a Facebook business page. They're going to get you out and about and creating blogs and videos and special offers and targets and getting ads out there that will bring people to your website. And you will think, geez, this is awesome. Because what they're trying to do is show you that they can be of value to you. Now, here is what is typical with a social media company like this. It is quite rare that they will not put you up front into some type of a long-term contract. In fact, it would be rare indeed to find somebody who does not do that. Now, I will tell you my experience over and over and over again with my mastermind group, with my all-star team, and with others that I'm coaching. This story happens all the time. They do some research, they sign up, they sign the contract, maybe it's a year contract, and after about three or four months, nothing really happens. Now, here's the other problem. Appraisers are very, very busy people. Do you have time to follow up with that social media company? Now, don't get fooled by this idea up front that they will say, listen, we're going to send you analytics every single month and you're going to get stats and you're going to see how much things are growing and how many unique visits you have to your website and how many conversions you have and all of this. And you don't need to worry about it. If you sign this long-term contract, we will uphold our part of the deal. Folks, let me tell you, <laughs> okay, listen to me. That sounds like great marketing and usually does not convert. What ends up happening time after time after time when I talk to appraisers is they end up spending that $1,000 a month for at least 12 months. Now, do the math on that, okay? Do you have ten dollars to $15,000 that you can dish out on social media marketing? Now, if it's going to garner you back three, four, five times that in revenue, what are you waiting for? But the problem is, is you are now locked into a contract. And I can tell you that over and over and over again, I see this three to four months. They're really good. And then they seem to drop off the face of the earth. So for three to four months, you're happy. And then you're too busy to follow up with them on the fourth, fifth and sixth month and say, what's going on with my marketing? And what ends up happening is over time, they get busy with other projects because they get new clients that are not appraisers, right? They get new clients that they're now focused on hooking them, bringing them in, helping them to be happy the first three to four months. Now, folks, if I ran a social media marketing company, which I have no desire to do, by the way, this would be my selling point. This would be the niche that I think that you could reach out and find great clients and customers because they're tired of dealing with social media companies that will promise the moon and deliver the light bulb in the room. You have got to stay on these social media companies and making sure that they fulfill their responsibilities. So in answer to the question, Dustin, would you recommend delegation of social media marketing to someone else? I would say not just yes, but hell yes, with a caveat. The caveat is that you have something in place that allows you to back out of the contract if they do not fulfill their end of the responsibility. Now, what that means is, please listen, if they come to you with a contract, read the fine print, because most likely all that contract will guarantee is they do a very minimal level of SEO and marketing for you. They do not promise results. Most companies find a company that will promise you results and hold their feet to the fire. Okay. Now you can find social media companies out there that will do this type of work for far less than a thousand dollars a month. I've seen companies out there that will do a good job for three to four to $500 a month and really give their effort. So take some time, look around the answer is yes, of course you should delegate this end of your business to someone else. 
but hold them accountable. Speaking of holding people accountable, hope you've been to my website lately and you've gone through the products section. There's a great webinar in there about human resources, about holding your contractors and your employees accountable for what they are doing for you. It's free for members of my all-star team. Hope you'll join us at the all-star team. Jump on theappraisercoach.com and check it out. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. doing everything that you possibly can do to be effective, to be efficient. And there's a bus passing me. So I'm going to wait here, editor. We have to edit this out. <laughs> Hi. All right. Back to the program.